I currently we have um, uh, 15 members who are on board, uh, mainly from SADIC in this part of uh, ECOWAS. Ghana is the only founder member uh, who is a member of AIFA. Currently, the full paid members are participating are eight and uh, could see from our documents. I'm going to go to check on our website. What are we trying to achieve as a board, um, as an association, is we are trying to get African solutions for African problems. As you are aware, the penetration of higher education in this part of the world, uh, in Africa, is less than 10%. And when you look at developed countries like the Asian Tigers, we have about 45% penetration of students transiting from secondary to university. And those are the aspirations that uh, the board is trying to achieve. Now, one of the ways to achieve is to try to see how we do this from a common front, all of us together. And then we have standard practices which are from Cairo to Cape Town. Um, you know, from uh, Mombasa to, you know, Liberia, the other end of the world. And those are the things that we are trying to push as, a, you know, as an association. And that's why the 2015 AGM was uh, found it necessary to come to ECOMAS so that we can be able to involve more members who can be able to join ECOMAS. Interestingly, we raised so many issues with regards to Africa and the way we are lacking in terms of financial education. Tell us, what is your association specifically doing, especially for your member countries, in order to get many people being financed for their education uh, is concerned? As you are aware, um, Africa is touted as the last growth frontier. This year, World Bank uh, expects that Africa will be growing at about 5%. This is one of the few continents which will be growing at about 5%. However, because of underdevelopment challenges, the amount of money that is being channeled to higher education is becoming uh, smaller and smaller. It is not enough to take everybody on board. So one of the clear messages that we are having for our associations and helping government to do is build government. We have other alternative means of uh, financing. One of those alternative means of financing higher education is making national revolving funds. If you look at, for example, STLF of the country, it is revolving the money that it was given by government. Now, we need to increase and maximize that revolvability of those funds because that revolvability helps us to create a bigger fund and then get more students to join you know, higher education because we know it is only through education that we can be able to transform society. So, okay, what have been your collaboration with higher education in Africa with regards to what we are teaching our children in terms of the quality of education and the world market? Because today, we look at many children, our university child out, they don't seem to meet the, so, this like a mismatch market. So far as the market is concerned, you have any collaboration and what have you done about it? Thank you. In my earlier message, when I was delivering a keynote address of the chairman of the president, you must have been talking about mismatch between what you are producing at the university and what is uh, how they are getting into uh, the, the, the job market. So remember, AEFA, by its own purpose, cannot be able to influence faculty. But we can be able to discuss with faculty in terms of producing graduates that actually fit the market. So one of the key things is that, and you must have seen, uh, you know, one of the vice uh, uh, chancellors was actually around, in terms of how do you collaborate on faculty development, faculties that are resonating with the problems of society. So yes, and as part of our agenda, moving forward, we'll be looking at also faculties that are repaying their loans. Because you know when you're not repaying your loan, then it means that you did the wrong faculty, you have no job, so it means that is where you're struggling to repay the loan. So we are looking for a common understanding between us and faculty holders, who are the universities themselves, to be able to tell them the society is experiencing these problems. Those are the graduates we need to produce for this market. And that way, we think we'll be helping a society problem of what you talked about, this point between the job market and what we are producing at the university. In case of Ghana, we know of the student learning class fund, they have been assisting students for some time. But of course, assessing it is even more difficult. And we also know from their end that the country is also that bad. That is why we are having this. Can you tell us about the public when it comes to our financing higher education like one? One of the key things that you need to congratulate STLF is they are now 10 years. 10 years, 80,000 students, that's not a small number. And if you look at most of the African bodies, they are also about 10 years, 15 years, or they are about. And the recovery rate of uh, you know, student loans is always a big challenge. Why? It is only these bonds who are able to take a risk on the students. Remember, you are financing somebody, you don't know whether you become a madman. And you actually give him money. 
and you see, I hope when he, you know, when Mondays gets out of it, then he will be able to pay. So it's a big risk that bodies like uh, STLF are taking, or bodies like uh, you know SLF and members of my are actually taking to be able to say that you can, I can give you money, and hopefully you'll be able to recover. So recovery is one of the agenda items that we are pushing as agenda as as a effort. Now, if you listen to me, I didn't say that we have a lot of movement across Africa. So the question is that if a Ghanaian, you know, took money from STLF and comes to work in Kenya, what collaboration can help of Kenya give him so that we can be able to help STLF in terms of that recovery, recovery program? That is what you call globalized loan recovery process. And if you use the standard means now currently pushing across the entire, uh, you know, Africa, we hope that out of that we should be able to get more people repaying this money. Alternatively, is to look at where do you get, instead of blaming STLF, how can STLF actually be able to get more money outside? And part of the agenda that we'll be discussing in this AGM is, for example, outside government, where else can we be able to get money? So we learn what Tanzania has done, we learn what Zambia has done, and out of that, then we apply it across the entire continent. Is there any difficulties you are faced with in terms of the land barrier? Can we look at West Africa? Can we look at the member? What advice and what in our strategic field on membership, one of the key risks that we encountered was language, and you are very right in terms of language. So towards this end, we are now recruiting the chief executive officer of uh, AEPA, who will then recruit business development officer. From our end, we think that this business development officer should be, you know, uh, francophone speaking, who can then help us in terms of getting this on board. There is no reason why you should be leaving any country behind. After all, African Union belongs to everybody. So yes, that's a challenge for now, but we are very clear in our strategy of how we will be able to overcome that. Thank you.